When I moved to the U.S., I always try to find a way on how to introduce and incorporate the Filipino culture in our daily life, especially now that we're a family of four. It's been eight years since I moved and nakapag-adjust na rin ako sa buhay dito. Today, I want to share three tips on how I maintain the Filipino culture in our household. Also, Christmas season already started in the Philippines and based on my experience back then when I was still new here in America, it can get kind of lonely and some might feel homesick around this time of the year. So I hope these tips will help Filipino abroad avoid feeling alone and lonely. <laughs> So first is calling regularly. The internet made it easier for people to keep in touch. Kahit saan bahagi ka man ng mundo, isang pindot lang, pwede na kayo magkausap face to face. Siyempre, iba pa rin yung physically, nandun ka kasama sila. But I'm still grateful na anytime, pwede ako matawag si Lola, matawagan ko si Lola kahit malayo ako. Myself, in a way, I want someone Para sa akin, importante na ma-share ko yung kultura ko sa mga anak ko kasi yun yung legacy na iiwan ko para sa kanila. Kaya gusto kong turuan yung mga anak ko ng Tagalog or Filipino para in the future, kung gusto man nilang magbiyahe dyan sa Pilipinas, kaya nilang makipag-usap sa mga Pilipino sa sarili nating lengguaje. I try calling my grandma once or twice a month. I need to prepare ahead of time though because of the time difference. They are 12 hours ahead so I need to make sure that they are still awake when I call. Pag tumatawag ako sa Pilipinas, I feel humble kasi naalala ko yung pinanggalingan ko and proud ako na sa Pilipinas ako lang lumaki. Sa bagay, hindi ka naman mahilig sa matamis. Thankful din ako at the same time kasi kahit kabundukan at karagatan man ang agwat ko kay Lola, may chance pa rin ako makabanday siya online. Para may pangsigarilyo si Lola. <laughs> Second is cooking Filipino food. I just got back from the Asian store. I'm gonna make tinola tonight. Um, it's been a while. How are you doing? Um, ang tagal ko rin hindi nakapag vlog. That's only because I gave birth to my second child, Mayumi. Um, she turned three months old so and I also took a break from YouTube because the transition from like having one child to having two child and then it's summer too I want to enjoy the summer go out and go to the water park do some stuff with uh, my other son now it's back to school and I have free time again now I'm back to YouTube again so tonight I'm gonna make some tinola if you've been following me for a while I've been making tinola every time every time I get the chance to go to the Asian store and buy some sayote. Sayote is like the main um, ingredient. Sayote and then dahon ng sili. And the name is actually not dahon ng sili. It's um, pepper leaves. So they call it pepper leaves. Um, but sa Pilipinas, tawag namin is dahon ng sili. So I got some sayote. I got some luya. I got some um, luya is ginger in English, and then dahon and sili, which is pepper leaves, and then chicken, of course. Tinola is one of our favorite Filipino food, and I love making it too because it's so simple and it only requires four ingredients. You'll need sayote, ginger or luya, any greens, but I prefer pepper leaves or dahon and sili because of the taste and the scent that it has. And then lastly is the chicken. This is a soupy dish that I normally cook when it's cold outside or whenever I feel under the weather. Sounds cliche, but it's true. I've been missing someone like
I'm thankful na nakatira kami malapit sa mga Asian store dito. Kaya anytime pwede ako magluto ng Filipino food. Personally, when I feel homesick, I cook Filipino food too because there's something nostalgic about cooking your favorite childhood dish. It's just very comforting. Some Filipino dishes that I've been missing lately are kare kare and pinakbet. Comment down below what's your favorite Filipino dish. I learned cooking from watching my mom and grandma in the kitchen. In the Philippines, most household uses gas, so we were not allowed to do anything but to watch. I'm surprised though that I've learned a lot just by watching. The best bonding moments always happens when there's food around, and I feel like the best way to keep the culture alive is through food. Third is watching Filipino shows. When I was young, I remember watching different kinds of Filipino shows like It Bulaga and It's Showtime. And then when I came to the US, I usually used YouTube to watch Filipino shows. There's also Netflix and they have decent Filipino movies. I feel like if you're bilingual, you will relate to this, but I like to watch Filipino movies because it feels good to hear a language you're familiar that your brain won't go on hyperdrive trying to understand what's being said like when I watch English movies. I also realized that my Tagalog skill is declining because I rarely speak it anymore. When I was talking to my grandma the other day, I'm running out of Tagalog vocabulary, which is pretty sad. So I feel like watching Filipino shows more often will help me a lot. Plus, I watch when my son is around because the more he hears Filipino words, the quicker he will learn when I teach him. When I watch Filipino movies, it helps me remember things about the Philippines that sometimes I forget because I've been in the US for a while. I would see Filipino recipes that I would want to try, the public transportation like jeepneys or tricycle, the Filipino street food, and people playing basketball on the street. It's just nice to see a visual representation of the Philippines while you're living here abroad. Those are my top three ways to keep the Filipino culture alive in your home if you're living abroad. Let me know if you want to add more in the comment section below. And I hope you guys enjoy watching this video. Give me a thumbs up and I will see you on the next one.